Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're going to be doing a seascape painting today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and list the colors that I used for this. And I'm going to go ahead and just start blocking in the sky. I'm going to take a little bit of white and cobalt blue. I'm just going to keep mixing that up until it's a very light shade of blue. I'm taking a little bit of primary red also. But you just want to make sure it's a very light color. So I'm going to go ahead and start blocking that in just at the very, very top. And I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas and I'm using a little fan brush to block this in with. As you can see from the reference photo, this is gonna transition into a very um, pink color down at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep picking up a little bit of portrait pink. So mix that in with that mixture that you have and just blend that into the blue. Okay, so we're moving down a little further. We're gonna add in even more of the portrait pink. Reaching the mid section of the sky, and as you can see, it's very illuminated from the sun, and it, it's a very, like a very pale yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Just some cad yellow mixed in with that mixture with the portrait pink, and just kinda work that in. We will come back to the sky um, at the very end, um, there were some little details that I wanted to kind of um, fix as I was looking at the painting and everything was dried. I kind of wanted to go back in. So, um, but just try to focus on your values right now, getting everything as light and dark as you need. And um, as you can see here, I'm mixing up some of that portrait pink and cad yellow. Um, the very bottom part down here is very, very pink. So, Go ahead and start mixing that and then we can just blend everything together now that we have the bottom part and the top part and then we can put our middle color in and we can just blend everything together. taking some burnt sienna and red and I'm just going to keep mixing that until I get um, a similar shade to what's on the reference photo. We want something lighter in color. Um, I am going to come back and modify this part but for now just blocking it in that's a good enough start so I'm going to go ahead and shape that out. I'm 
I'm using a fairly bigger round brush. It's um, It's got, you know, a nice pointed edge on it and it's good enough to just block this part in. Now I'm taking a little bit of black and mixing it in with some of that red mixture that we have and I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the closer part of the land right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the sand on the very right side of the painting. And I'm taking some of the black and mixing it in with that mixture that we had. There was just some red and burnt sienna. I just added a little bit more black. And I'm just gonna, I'm using a flat one inch brush Now I'm making sure that I'm going out further enough to the left side just because I want some of that to kind of uh, be underneath the water. Um, so you want to make sure that you give yourself enough room and come far enough out for the water to overlap onto the sand. So I'm going to go ahead and um, with that mixture that we already have made up here, I'm taking a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Cobalt Blue. So I'm going to also kind of be um, using different shades and um, adding a little bit more of the red in with this as I kind of come up closer. So it's good to have some variation in it. You don't want it um, all one color because there's so many different colors in the reference photo. So if it's not all one same color, um, that's actually gonna benefit you in the long run. So change it up and just, you know, with your base layer, just don't be afraid to kind of get crazy with the colors a little bit and make sure, you know, things, there's a little bit of variation in the paint colors.
I'm gonna go ahead and mix up um, a light mixture. I'm using some portrait pink and I'm gonna take a little bit of the Napful Red Light and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of right at the edge of that water where the water is meeting the sand, I'm gonna try to kind of outline that area. gonna go ahead and start blocking in um, some of these little waves well actually these are the biggest waves because they're up closer to us and I'm just kind of like making a little diagonal line and I'm kind of taking my brush and making little like little waves coming off of that line if that makes sense. It's gonna mimic the shape of a wave and it's kind of hard to tell right now, but um, if you just kind of practice that, you'll get the hang of it once you keep doing this over and over again. Um, you know, it's, the more and more you do water, the more and more you'll become more comfortable with it. The main thing you wanna make sure of is that you're making sure that when you're putting in waves, you're really focusing on getting the waves to be more horizontal the farther that they go out and smaller obviously um, because I think the biggest problem that I that I see when people are painting water um, is the perception um, or like the perspective of their painting um, the waves in the back look really big and it just doesn't look realistic um, so if you're going from like more of a realistic uh, painting 
then try to really get that um, technique down. I think it'll help you a lot in your seascapes. So, um, and just remember that it's just a layering process. It's a lot of um, highlighting and, you know, putting in shadows. Right now, this is acting as like a shadow. And then whatever we're putting in, like whatever, wherever I'm putting these little lines in at, I'm always going to try to go back over and go kind of outline them with um, the highlight color, which is going to really shape your waves and that's what's going to make them pop. So um, there's a lot of different techniques that I use. Um, sometimes I'll use a fan brush, which I will be using for the very distant waves here, um, you know, later in the painting. But for now, I'm just kind of trying to put in some shadows and things like that and just it's just a layering process really. got portrait pink on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of go over like I said the dark parts that I put in and just kind of try to start incorporating my base layer of my highlights. I'm taking a fan brush and I'm taking a little bit of light blue, blue permanent and I just grabbed a little bit of portrait pink and white. I'm just going to have that light blue mixture and I'm going to start putting in my base layer of the heavy white wash. Now this is, you know, that I'm kind of trying to make my brush strokes somewhat smaller down or up in this area because it is farther away and then as I get down closer I'm gonna put more pressure on my brush and try to make everything bigger but you almost want it to be blended you don't want to see a lot of texture up through here in this area because um, like I said, that, that is going to help with your depth and it's going to make it look more realistic. So try to hold back on detail as much as you can in this area. And then we are going to really detail out this foreground whitewash that's closest to us.
Now keep in mind too that uh, this is just the base light layer of the whitewash. Um, I'm going to be gradually um, taking a smaller brush and detailing everything out, making everything smaller up in this foreground area, like I said. So this is just the, you know, the main part. And I'm making sure that I'm going dark enough so that way I have room to put highlights on. So just keep that in mind as well. And another tip is when you're putting in a wave, if you look closely at the picture, like where it, the wave is rolling somewhat over, I guess it's not really rolling over, but where it kind of concaves forward, um, you see like a little bit of a shadow area. So in that area, maybe make a mixture darker and then as it gradually comes down and flattens out, um, go ahead and add a little bit more white to your mixture because that's where the sun is going to be, or, you know, that's where um, it's, you know, going to be exposed um, and the darker area is going to act more of like a shadow for the whitewash. So even detailing your whitewash and having different tones with that is really going to help too. Sometimes the shape in which you're applying the whitewash, it's going to kind of imply what type of wave it is or what's going on in the water. It can really help shape your water out. See, like right now I'm kind of having it come down at such an angle where it kind of looks like it is a little bit of wave. There's like a bunch of whitewash on that little wave right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a smaller brown brush than I had before and I'm going to take some of that portrait pink mixed with a little bit of that red that we had already and I'm just going to go through right in this midsection to try to brighten it up. So now I'm going to go ahead and really start pulling out the details in this whitewash using the same colors as before, the light blue, making sure not to go too dark. And I'm just kind of doing like little tiny circles, like wiggling my brush back and forth. 
not using too much pressure, but I am using some water on my brush so everything flows nicely. Um, this is not going to be the smallest brush that I use to detail this out, but I'm working my way down um, so I can just get multiple layers of the um, foamy water coming through. So even on top of this, we're going to go with a smaller detail brush and really pull the details out. So now I'm taking the smallest brush that I'm going to be using. It's a very small rigger brush and I'm just going to go ahead and start doing the same exact pattern, same exact uh, thing that I was doing, just kind of wiggling my brush back and forth, trying to make sure that some of these areas of whitewash connect with another area and, um, you know, just, just going in and detailing everything out. So with that same little brush, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the Payne's Gray and just kind of work that in. 
and reincorporate some of those lost shadows just to kind of bring out extra depth. I've got a fan brush and I'm just going to go ahead and try to bring out, brighten this area up. I just keep looking back at my reference photo and thinking that this area really needs to be brightened up. So I'm just going to gradually try to uh, lighten this up and put some more pink tones in it. So now I'm going to go ahead and pick up some red and portrait pink. Just try to, like I said, just bring out those more, more pink tones in that midsection.
So I'm just trying to kind of like outline the dark areas. Like I said earlier, just trying to um, lighten this area, but also uh, to define everything, just to kind of shape it out. Whenever you're putting shadows or highlights on an object or water or anything really, whether it's whatever medium you're using, it's always, that's always what's going to shape everything. That's what's going to give it a 3D look is by pulling out those highlights and by darkening those shadows. That's what's going to make everything come to life. So I've got my fan brush and I've got black on my brush and I'm going to just lightly dab, I'm not using a lot of pressure because I want, I want a lot of um, individual marks. I don't want to press too hard or use too much paint on my brush um, because I don't want big clumps of paint. These are very distant little waves. So um, just go ahead and try to practice doing that. Sometimes it takes a little practice trying to get the rhythm right, but um, that's really all I'm doing, just to give those little waves back there in the distance something, some sort of detail, but not too much. Now I'm, I'm getting closer, um, so I'm going to try to make these, a little, these marks a little bit more pronounced, a little bigger, using a little bit more paint on my brush, and I'm going to try to uh, curve, curve them a little bit, um, because when waves are closer to you, they're curved, and when they're farther away, they're more of a horizontal shape. And now that we've got our dark, darker shadows in, I've got portrait pink on my brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and, like we do any other time, just highlight those shadows. I'm going right above the shadows. And I'm going to take it all the way back 
as well. I've got my smaller round brush and I'm going to start incorporating the shadows through this bright area that we have. Even though it is bright in the sun or in the sunset, you still want to have some depth. You still want to have those shadows in there. So we're going to go ahead and pull those in there, but I wanted a smaller brush. So I'm using my very small uh, detail brush again. Just going to add in just a little bit more detail in the white wash where it gets heavier. Obviously, the parts that are going to have heavy white wash near the sand is going to be more white. I really just feel like you can never have enough detail in water paintings. That's what I love about them. 
you know, you can just, you can go um, very impressionistic. You can put a bunch of detail in it. It just is so much fun. I, I love painting water. It's actually really therapeutic for me. I just love everything about the ocean and painting it. So this is pretty much to the final step. I'm just kind of touching up these last final details and tiny little highlights that are coming off of these waves. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I always enjoy seeing the work that you guys do. It makes my day. So if there's ever a tutorial that you would follow and you want to share it with me, you can um, do so. You can actually uh, Facebook message me if you'd like under Lucid Renditions Art. Um, that's my art page. I love seeing all of the paintings that you guys do. So thank you so much for watching. And again, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in my next video.